if AI misses something, who's responsible? A radiologist does more than image interpretation. A whole human has to be there to do those things. Do you guys know what time it is? It's time to talk about AI on this channel again. And I admit, since my last video, which was over a year ago at this point, AI has made a lot of strides. ChatGPT has come out. So, with these strides, do we think that radiology is still going to survive? <laughs> do I have to make another video like this? I will make a video like this every single year if it'll make you happy. But my answer is still a firm yes. I don't think that radiology will be replaced with AI. That doesn't mean that AI isn't going to be used in radiology because newsflash, radiology already uses AI all the time, every single day, multiple times a day, multiple different AI algorithms are being utilized within radiology practices all the time. We use it for nodule detection. We use it to detect a bleed. We use it to detect breast cancer on mammograms. We use it to detect rib fractures. We use it to detect so many different things. But guess what? There's still somebody that's reading those images because AI can't read the entire image. And even if it could, there would still need to be a radiologist involved for a variety of reasons. But the one thing that, I mean, that we have to address, the elephant in the room, is that if someone misses something, not someone, if AI misses something, who's responsible? If there is no radiologist, who's responsible? That's why you need a radiologist, because you need somebody who's going to take ownership of the images, who's going to take ownership of the read, and also explain to you, to the patient, to the ordering person, what the read means. So with that, with that little intro, let's get into why I still don't think that AI is going to take over radiology, if I haven't already mentioned it. When people tell me that AI is going to take over radiology, it makes me realize that people don't really realize all of the things that a radiologist does every single day. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Yes, AI can help us with some of the image interpretation and that like heavy on the sum, right? Like only on some of it. They can't really synthesize all of the information. AI can't synthesize every piece of the patient chart and everything that we do to read an image. Yes. On the other side of the imaging, someone just gets a report. It seems like, yeah, maybe a robot could make this report, but that's not really how radiology works. I have to use the information that someone gave me about why a patient is getting this imaging, put it together with everything about the patient, prior diagnoses, patient age, patient gender, I mean everything, right, chief complaint, and then tell you what I think is going on. AI can do some of that for us, no doubt. They, it already helps us, like I said. We already use AI all the time, but it can't give you the same level of analysis that a real life physician would, at least not today. Now, that being said, aside from just image interpretation, which is the main part of our job, there are a lot of other things that a radiologist does. So saying AI can take over radiology, that's not true because a radiologist does more than image interpretation. We do things like biopsies. I mean, we do biopsies every single day. Um, we do lung biopsies, we do breast biopsies, we do lumbar punctures, we do myelograms, we do, I mean, if you want to talk about IR, we do all sorts of procedures, thoracentesis, paracentesis, we are doing all kinds of things. Aside from just procedures, we are also back scanning for ultrasound. So what does that mean? That means that if someone comes in with a breast lump, I see their mammogram, I see that, oh, it looks like they have a mass and maybe we didn't see it on the first ultrasound. I will personally go in and see if I can find the mass. That doesn't happen with AI, right? AI can't do that for you. That is a whole human has to be there to do those things. So radiologists aren't just sitting there dictating cases, although we do that a lot. We are hands-on, talking to patients, doing procedures, troubleshooting, why imaging studies are not coming out the way that we want. Maybe the scanner is not giving us a nice image. Why is that happening? We have to troubleshoot that. There has to be a person to do all of these things. So that's one thing. The second thing is that we also talk to our um, the other doctors that are in the building, other providers in the building. We talk to them all the time. And also we talk to patients. We explain 
you know, why we think something is real, why we think something is not real, and or why we are saying that this needs to have a biopsy and this doesn't need to have a biopsy. Like we are talking to our, we're talking to other people all the time and explaining these things. You can't really do that with AI. You really need another person. You really need somebody to, I don't know, to answer the phone call, to tell you what is the best imaging modality. And I will tell you, like you might put it into chat GPT and say, what's the best imaging modality? You're not gonna get always the right answer. I mean, ChatGPT is not always right. AI is not always right. You need somebody there to verify these things. And so there's a lot of things that radiologists do that AI doesn't, that AI can't do. We also present a tumor board. We are always there. There's always really radiology present because we talk about the imaging findings for patients that have cancer, or if they have other complex diagnoses that need explanation for what we're seeing on the imaging and we need to actually like talk about treatment plans with our doctors. That is something that, again, AI isn't going to be able to do. Anybody can read a report, but actually understanding why we are saying the things that we are saying, that's, I mean, that requires a human to be present. So that is also all, all part of our job description. That's all part of the stuff that we do. Um, so to say that AI can take over that, well, that's just simply not true. Another thing that people don't really talk about as much are false positive findings that AI sees all the time. I mean, I think if you ask any neuroradiologist, you have calcifications in your brain that can be a normal thing. Um, you get just cal calcium, and AI can call it a bleed. And then if you are sending an AI-generated report to somebody who doesn't know the difference between those two things, they will say that you have a brain bleed, when in reality, you have nothing. You have physiologic calcifications in your brain, which, which have no other implication, right? They don't, it, it's fine. In fact, most radiologists wouldn't even mention that in your report and now you have an AI saying that that's a bleed. Obviously like if someone is has a concern for a stroke and you want to give TPA which is like the main treatment, the main early intervention for a stroke and then you have an AI report that's saying that there's a brain bleed when that is a contraindication to TPA, now you have just prevented a patient from getting the treatment that they need because of a false positive on a report from AI. In mammography and breast imaging we have historically used something called computer-aided detection, which is AI that helps us find cancers. And again, it will literally highlight every single thing on the mammogram. It'll highlight benign calcifications. It'll highlight benign fibroglandular tissue that maybe it thinks looks like a mass. And all of these things are not cancer. So again, in the wrong hands, that report can be very scary. It's going to take a very, very long time for I think other doctors to 100% fully trust an AI report over a real radiologist because it is just wrong. It's, it's not 100% accurate and it's not even accurate enough times for anyone to feel comfortable going off of an AI only report. So <laughs> all of that to say, AI is not always right. It is actually wrong a lot of the time and it's very scary when patients and other physicians may believe that AI is more accurate than a radiologist because that's not true. And also in the context of patient care, that can be very scary and have a lot of far-reaching implications for each individual patient, but also on a population level. So that is why, again, I don't think that AI can fully replace radiologists. One thing you might not know about radiology is that we are always utilizing new techniques, new sort of like imaging modalities and new, um, just new ways of getting more answers from our imaging. So what do I mean by that? Like things like dual energy CT, getting more information from images that we already have, using contrast in mammography, contrast enhanced mammography, creating new protocols for breast MRI. And when I say protocol, I mean like new sequences that we can obtain or how to make it faster or like what are the things that we look at. AI algorithms take a long time to create and there is no way that they can keep up with all of the new things that are happening within medical imaging. Um, I'm thinking like contrast enhanced ultrasound, things like that. Like there is just no way that you can create a new algorithm for all of these new imaging modalities and new techniques that we are creating at the same pace. It's just not possible. And making sure that it's again accurate, like maybe you could create it, sure, but is it going to be correct? Is it gonna be accurate? It's just not possible. It's not possible. The number of things that we do and we learn in radiology, it's just not possible for an AI to 
keep up with all of those things and maintain a certain level of accuracy that would be needed for it to fully replace radiologists. I mean, it's just not possible. I think it's so easy for people to say, oh, well, AI is going to take your job. But like, they don't really understand what our job is and how we are constantly innovating and we're constantly trying to get more answers and we're trying to constantly improve our imaging techniques. And yes, we would love to implement AI for certain things, but there's no way that AI can completely replace the things that we do. So yeah, that is like, yes, AI is getting better. No doubt, AI is getting better. But again, we do so many things that AI just cannot replace all of it and also maintain that level of human interaction, answering questions to the same degree, taking responsibility for the images the way that we do as radiologists, and I don't know, just being an integral part of patient care. There's just, there's just no way that AI can do all of those things. What I will say and what I will end with is that I do think, and I mean we already are, like I said, using AI in radiology, and I do think that we are going to continue to expand the presence of AI in radiology and we're going to learn how to make us, it's going to help us become more efficient, which it already has. It's going to help us triage our cases. It's going to help us get better care for our sickest patients. It's going to improve screening and improve our patient outcomes. These are all things that are true and most radiologists are here for it. Like all of us are ready for that. I mean, we are super overworked. Not me personally, but radiology in general. There is a radiology shortage, radiologist shortage, I should say, because you can scan one patient in how long? Like less than 10 seconds, but you can't read a CT scan in that much time. And so the backlog continues to grow. The number of imaging studies that are performed continues to rise, and there are not enough radiologists that are available to read all of those things, all of those studies. And so these are all ways that AI can help us. We can be more efficient. We can just be better radiologists and maybe move a little faster and hopefully cut down on the radiologist shortage. But at the end of the day, there's no way that a hospital or anybody will feel comfortable 100% using AI instead of actually having a human radiologist there to overread whatever the AI says. There's just, it is not gonna happen. And if you really believe that radiology could be replaced with an AI algorithm, then I would suggest that you actually go and shadow a radiologist for a day and see all the things that that radiologist is doing because there's just no way that a computer could take over all of that. So that is my yearly update on AI in radiology. There is no way that it will be replaced. I will say it again, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. When I first started medical school, people were talking about AI in radiology. In fact, you know what people were talking about? They were talking about teleradiology, and that overseas radiologists will take over. And it's been, since I started medical school, that was how many years ago now? I started in 2017 eight years ago. Wait, no, I started residency in 2017. I started medical school in 2013. Oh my God. It has been 12 years since I started medical school. And I would say that we need more radiologists now than ever. So if you are somebody looking into going into radiology, don't let it deter you. I think that we are on the forefront of all of this technology. I think it's so cool. We have so much potential to implement AI within our specialty. But no, it will not be replaced. And if everything goes well, I will see you guys all in this same video next year. Bye.